Hi guys. So in this tutorial, we're going to map out uh, a simplified rock based on some point clouds that we generated using our jigs in class. So as you can see here, I only took a few different points, uh, kind of the high points and low points to create some planes. So from here, I have the top of the rock, and then from here, I have the bottom of the rock. So to get started, I just made like my jig here, and I can kind of point out which points are going to be connected because I color organize them. So I know the greens is going to make a, a plane, the blues is going to make a plane, et cetera, et cetera. So to do this, what I'm going to first off do is just select this surface from three to four corner points tool. And so since I color organized everything, I'm just going to connect all of my green dots together. And just right click if you only have three points and it'll create a surface for you already. So from there, I'm going to connect these blue points using the same command and continue on. So this can get a bit tedious, just depending on how well you measured your rock, but it can go pretty quickly if you have your points semi-organized. The main thing is if they're not the same color, um, and you're trying to connect them, just simply look at your rock and try to figure out where you took that measurement from. And then you can try to almost interpolate the data. Um, and then you're able to just create a surface that coincides with how your rock geometry is. So there I just put together the top formation of my rock. Next, I'm going to just come over to the bottom half. And again, I have them organized. So I know my magentas here are going to go together. And I typically, when I'm doing these types of uh, point clouds, I try not to do four point surfaces. I try to triangulate it. So only using three points per. It just makes working with this a little bit easier. And then you don't get any kind of dueling curving surfaces to go along with your model. So greens to greens, and then I'm going to show you guys kind of an orientation technique that will fit these two halves together. And there might be some modifications needed afterwards just to make sure it's a solid object that works together. So just finishing up here. The main thing, after you guys do finish uh, doing this, you're going to need to kind of look it over again and make sure it's pretty similar to your rock so it fits uh, for your assignment. So next, I'm just going to go up to my selection tab here, select all my points again, and potentially just lock them. So I know one thing to kind of look at here is the reds here correlate with these reds here. So I know that this edge is going to join with this edge. And that'll help with orienting this back uh, into its original position. And the same goes for this green to this green. So for this, what I'm going to do is just select my surfaces, because I have my jig locked. Um, since these are all singular surfaces, we can just select that all together. And I'm going to just deselect one half. And the next thing I'm going to do is type in orient three point. Now for this tool, you got to select three different points on this rock surface. And another good way of thinking about this, maybe before we use that tool too, is select our surfaces and join them. So they're one singular object each. And then if it messes up, at least we ha can come back and just select one. Uh, orient three point, and I'm going to keep track. So this first red point I'm going to select, the second red point, and then my last green point I'm going to select. And so if I look over at this side of the rock, this would be my first red point that I know snaps to the next, uh, my second, and then my third. And magically, that rock is oriented to this side of the rock. And so next, what I'm going to do is just copy that over. I'm going to come back, because you might need this for a drawing. Um, 
and I'm just, I just copy and paste the fully formed rock. And next, I'm going to look at this rock, and I'm going to just join the two halves together. And as you can see, I have a hole there, and there might be some more missing. So what I typically do, if there is an open end, I type in duplicate border. And that's going to give me every little open spot in there defined by a curve. And what I can do after that, since I use triangles, they're all planar, I can type in planar surface, and that's going to seal that up. So next, I'm going to just join all those together. And if we look over here in our pro properties, it says closed poly surface. And this is just one technique that you can use to make a kind of de-resed, faceted rock.